It's all about the lockdown. Let's talk about it. Hello everyone, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Right, so we've had another lockdown announced. Uh, the good news is, um, from what we're hearing and the news out there from the surveyors, which was the biggest worry, they're still continuing to visit properties. Um, as you may know, last time around when there was a lockdown, um, the, the cloghead, I suppose the bottleneck, was the surveyors not visiting properties for surveys. Um, this time around, we've had a number of firms like Countrywide Surveyors, who are one of the largest ones out there, confirm that they will continue to visit properties. Um, what I would say is this seems to be a little bit of a watery lockdown because trade people can go in, come in and out of the houses, um, you know, lots of different uh, trades are still continuing. Um, I'm to a mind of, and I'm, this might be a bit controversial, um, if you're going to do a lockdown, do a lockdown. If you're going to do it, do it timely, first of all. Don't do it three, three weeks, four weeks, one month, two months late. But if you're going to do it, make it a full lockdown. You know, um, I, I remember the Wuhan images when, when this first kicked in. And the sort of lockdown they had now that was a proper lockdown um you know with schools going back obviously we know universities is a big problem anyway um so i'm not sure if this is you know if this is going to do it really um i i would have preferred if it was going to be if you're going to go through the pain of a lockdown do it properly so we can actually try to really bring the numbers down um but i i appreciate that you know people need services people you know people need plumbers people need stuff at their home so um i can see where that's coming from but i just feel like uh it's a little bit of a watered down approach um in terms of financing so the mortgage market will still continue uh we still got some huge problems ahead uh, mainly through the solicitors I would say out of every two complaints we get, three complaints, pretty much all of them are, are solicitor related, whether or not the solicitor is not contacting them, whether they've had the offer and they haven't issued the offer, whether it's the lender's legal department's not issuing the offer in time. Um, it's all to do with legals. Okay, so guys, be prepared. I mean, lender service levels are horrendous. You know, we're talking about a month uh, wait for some lenders out there. So that's not even better. Um, uh, what I what I will say is obviously that at least the market is not going to halt. It's not going to stop to 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 a ground. I mean, I've got a lot of cases in the pipeline right now, um, and we were worried. You know, first thing on Sat on Saturday was it Sat Saturday or Sunday announced. Uh, and we were thinking, oh my God, what are we going to do? And then, yes, we were overwhelmed with emails into the office. What's going to happen? How's this going to affect it? Can I get my valuation book? They booked my valuation during lockdown. Is this going to happen? So um, that's really positive that the, the, they will continue to be out there. Like I said, you can see it from two perspectives. You can see it from a selfish perspective as a finance broker. Yes, surveys are going out there. Yes, you know, it's not as, as harsh as before, but from a... I suppose a humanity perspective i'm not sure i'm i i'm i would i would much prefer that we had a harder longer lockdown first time round and you know statistics shown uh, throughout the world the people that did it quicker they did it longest and they did it harder i've actually fared better there was a saying um with one of my friends that i was talking to them and saying look you know we've had to do all of this stuff we just have to be we've just been kicking and dragging our heels by doing it but we've had to do it um so anyway um in terms of uh in terms of uh, business volumes that i'm getting lots and lots of um comments in our um in these videos about guys when do you think is a good time to buy when do you think is a good time to you know should we wait to sell um I said something and I left a comment for one of the chaps uh, last night. He said to me, look, I'm a first time buyer. I've got 80 grand saved up. I've got 80,000 pounds saved up. When is a good time for me to, you know, pull the trigger and buy? And I said, well, it's going to be very difficult to, to, to answer that. But all I can say is, look, about 25 years ago, I bought a three bedroom semi um, property for 134,000 pounds. Okay. And at that time, I remember thinking, God, that's expensive. I'm paying over the odds here, you know. But that's what the market was, you know. It was about 100, 140, 135, something like that. Um, and I was thinking, oh, my God, that is, that's quite expensive, you know. It was an investment property, but I thought that was, that's expensive. Um, and now, 25 years later, that property is worth half a million, okay. So, 
you know, you're always, I bought another property um, for £323,000 in 2007. Um, now, granted, this gives you an idea of not buying in a good area. So I didn't buy it in a good area. It was always going to be an investment property. Um, and 10 years later, or 15 years later, I sold I sold it, I think two years ago, two and a half years ago, and I sold it for 465. So I bought it for 323, and I sold it for 465. Um, now, if I had sold that, pro if I had bought that property in a better area, in a better location, if I pushed myself a little bit more, that property would have doubled easily in that time. But because it wasn't in a, in a desirable area, it sort of, it went up, and don't get me wrong, I made good money on it, but by the time you've paid your uh, capital gains tax at a, at a higher rate, um, you know, you could, I could have done a lot, lot better for it. So, um, but what I will say is at the time when I bought it, I remember my, um, my brother-in-law turned around to me and says, oh my goodness me, you've paid so much more. I've spoken to the neighbors and they bought their property for this much and you've now gone and paid this much over the odds. And I said, look, I'm buying this property for 10, 15, 20 years. I don't care what it's gonna be worth next week or next year. I'm buying it because I've got this cash, I've got the deposit and I'm putting it into property. And I'll keep it for 10, 15 years. And I remember actually about six years ago when I was buying my own residential property at the time, I thought, well, let me free out some cash and I'll put the property up for the mar on the market for 400, 415, I think. I put the property up on the market for 415. Didn't sell. It didn't sell so much so that I had to refinance it then um, and I remortgaged it. Um, but you know, three years later, two and a half years later, it went up for four, six, five. So it just gives you an idea of how property prices can fluctuate. But normally, whenever you think you're paying, you know, this is it. I, I can't believe this house so expensive. How could property prices be so expensive? It tends to go up more and more and more. Now, granted, I think in the short term, property prices are going to take a hit. Certainly next year, it's going to be taking a hit. But over the long term, you know, if you're buying a property for 10, 15, 20 years, with the sort of uh, shortages that we've got in this country, um, with the way uh, population moving, um, I think you know. I think it's a pretty good bet. I, I've been I've been dabbling into stocks at the moment. Okay, so I thought, well, I've, I've set up my trading two one two account and I put some money in the account and I've taken an absolute pasting. Okay, uh, I think the stocks are well, pretty much all of my stocks are down. I mean. I mean, you're talking about the big ones, you know, your Amazons and your Facebook and your Apples and your, you know, your Teslas and things like that. I think they're all down by about 10%. So I've taken a bit of a pasting. But again, you've got to take a view of, I'm not looking to sell these stocks now. What am I going to do? Sell it and put it, put it in my bank for, get what, 0% interest? So it's a long-term approach. And I, whether you're buying as a residential property or a buy-to-let or investment property, you know, you if you are, you should be looking at long term and long term, what's this area going to be like? Long term, is this area actually on its way down? Was it on the way up? Uh, if it's a residential, if it's a, if it's an investment property, what's going to happen? How is that going to add? Are there too many, you know, if you're going to buy a flat out there for buy to let, are there lots of flats around it that are buy to lets themselves? Do you know what I've had in the last month? I had two cases of buy to let blocks in Manchester. Okay, so these are new build blocks that people have put money down. Okay, and they were struggling to get mortgages on them now because it was oversold to buy to let investors. Can you believe that? So basically, the lenders said, "No one's living in this block. It's all rented. We don't. We don't want that because if things go wrong, you just let it repossess because it's not your home. You you know, there's a greater danger of repossession." Because if it's not a buy, you know, if you're struggling financially and you're, it's not your residential home, you'll probably let it go. And some block, uh, block exposures to investment properties are so great on the new build side, certainly in, in Manchester, the ones that I looked at, um, that, you know, a lot of lenders were declining them. A lot of lenders were declining them. So, you know, watch out. It, it's, it's about the property. It's about the property. It's about the location. Um, anyway, I've gone on a tangent here. So it's all good. Guys, carry on doing, you know, buying, selling. Um, I'm not sure what the estate agents are doing, whether or not they'll be open, but certainly um, I know the surveyors are and a lot of the solicitors are working from home. So, um, yeah, all systems go. Thank you so much again, guys. Uh, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care, all the best. 
The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up mortgage payments. Niche advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority.